All right, this is our first video for Chapter 7. We're talking about chemical reactions. So let's go ahead and discuss what a chemical reaction is. Chemical reactions occur when substances go through chemical changes to form new substances. So this is going to be when you have um, something that reacts with something else or when something is flammable or combusts or burns. Because remember, our two chemical properties were flammability and reactivity. So if they deal with either one of those chemical properties, then we're, we have a chemical reaction. Now, reactants are the part of the chemical reaction that participate or undergo a chemical change. So they're what we begin with. Products are a result of or produced in a chemical change, and that is what we end up with. Now, chemical reactions rearrange atoms, okay? So that means in, they don't create new atoms, and you don't destroy atoms, but you actually just rearrange the bonds that you currently have. Kind of like if you get tired of how your living room is set up, but you don't have money for new furniture. What you do is you just rearrange your furniture to give you a new feel instead of buying new furniture. Now, chemical reactions rearrange the bonds in atoms, atoms just like you would rearrange your furniture. They do not create new atoms. So here is an example of a chemical reaction. On the left-hand side of the arrow, you have your reactants. On the right-hand side of the arrow, you have your products. And make sure you're familiar with reactants and products because that's what we're going to be talking about a lot this unit. Now, we've already discussed this, but let's look at four evidences that we have a chemical reaction. The first is a gas formation. If a gas is formed, then that's usually telling us we have a chemical reaction. Sometimes if we have a color change. Now remember, if we paint a wall, that's not a chemical reaction. That's just a physical change because we're not changing the wall's substance. We're just changing the color of it. However, if we mix two liquids together and they change colors, then that is evidence of a chemical reaction. Now, number three, precipitate forming. That means when you mix two liquids together, sometimes you'll have a fuzzy substance that starts to form at the bottom, and that's an evidence of a chemical reaction. Also, if you have energy released or absorbed, that's evidence of a chemical reaction. So if you're holding a beaker and energy is released, that means the beaker starts to get warm. If you're holding a beaker and the beaker starts to get cold, that means that energy has been absorbed. And so either one of those can be an evidence that a chemical reaction is occurring. Now, chemical reactions always involve changes, changes in energy. Um, energy has to be added to break bonds. If you're, so if you're wanting to break something apart, you have to add energy. And you can add heat, sound, or light. Those three forms of energy can be used to break bonds if you need to. Now, if we need to form bonds, those actually release energy, okay? So you have to add energy to break bonds, but to form bonds, you're going to release energy. Now, we're talking about energy being released and energy being absorbed, and it kind of sounds like that you lose energy or you create energy, but that's not the case. You just are going to, the energy is just going to change forms and sometimes leave your reaction but it's still going to be in the universe or in the atmosphere. You've just changed forms of the, the energy's just changed forms, but if you have the same amount of energy that you began with, it's just in a different form. So we have to remember that energy is conserved in chemical reactions. And that's the law of conservation of energy. The law of conservation of energy states that energy cannot be created or destroyed, um, but we know from studying chemical reactions that that energy can just change forms. Now, your reactant energy is always going to equal your total product energy, okay? Now, we have two types of reactions that we want to talk about. We have endothermic reactions and we have exothermic. So let's talk about exothermic first. Reactions that release energy are exothermic. And the way I remember that is if I'm exiting the interstate or a highway, then I get on the exit ramp. So when a reaction releases or gives away energy, it's exothermic. So it's like the energy is exiting. Now, this gets a little confusing, but just pay attention and write down a couple of questions if you have them as we're talking about this. We say that energy is conserved, but if we're not in a closed system, meaning that we're taking care of all the energy um, energy being released or energy being absorbed, 
then sometimes we can't account for that energy because sometimes it goes away in the atmosphere. Um, it's just like burning a match. Remember we talked about that when you burn a match, you start with a certain amount of matter, but you still have the same amount of matter at the end. It's just some of that matter is ashes and some is smoke. But a lot of times we don't catch the smoke from the match. And so that smoke is released into the atmosphere. So in an exothermic reaction, you need more energy to form bonds than you do to break the bonds. And the energy of the products ends up being less than the energy of the reactants because during the reaction, remember, energy is released. And if we don't capture that energy, then it's released into the atmosphere and it looks like our products have less energy than they began with. Now, exothermic reactions also produce an increase in temperature. They're the ones that if you're holding the beaker and it starts to get warm, that means that you've got an exothermic reaction. And an example is a combustion reaction. Anything that explodes or catches on fire is always exothermic. Now let's look at endothermic reactions. These are reactions that absorb energy. And the way I remember that is um, absorbing means taking in. So if my reaction is taking in energy, it's endothermic. So in, um, taking in energy goes with endothermic. So more energy in an endothermic reaction is needed to break bonds than to form bonds. Now this also is um, when we look at if we can't capture the energy, that some of the energy from the atmosphere is taking into this reaction. So it looks like the energy of the products is greater than the energy of the reactants because as the reactants are starting to undergo their change, they're taking in energy from the atmosphere around them. So that means at the end, there's a lot more energy than what they started with. Now, endothermic reactions produce a decrease in temperature. So if you're holding a beaker and it starts to get cold, that means you have an endothermic reaction. An example of this is photosynthesis. And photosynthesis is a chemical reaction that plants go through to help produce their food. Now, this is a graph showing you endothermic reaction. This is showing you that the reactants start down here at a low energy level. They go through and they're taking in energy the whole time from the atmosphere or the um, environment around them. And then they go through their chemical change and look, the products end up at a higher energy level. Again, that doesn't mean we added energy to it. It just means it took energy from the environment or the atmosphere around it and changed it into another form. Here's exothermic. This is where we start with our reactants, and through the chemical reaction, it releases energy into the environment around itself, and you have a lower product energy level because of that. So let's go ahead and do our summary for this video. I would like you to write two questions you still have about the material, and I would like you to write three main points of the video, so three really important things to remember from our video. And I hope you have a good evening, and I'll see you in class.